Okay, looks like we're ready to begin reassembly of the General Motors rear brake shoe assembly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lubricate the backing plates. I'm going to show you where the pivot points are. The brake shoes slide across here, here, and here. And same as in the back, you have three slide points in the back as well. You want to make sure that those get lubricated because uh, the brake shoe is going to slide against those and if there's no grease on them, they're going to start squeaking and making all kinds of noise and eventually the brake shoes won't move at all. Okay, they actually dig a the shoe will dig a little trench right into the backing plate. Of course, now we have our brake shoes over here. And we'll go ahead and get those set up on the bench while things are nice and easy for us. We'll take our star wheel adjuster. Okay, we want to make sure that it's working properly, so I'm going to partially take it apart so we can look inside. Threads look good if necessary. Apply a little bit of that white lithium grease to the threads so that it's working nice and smooth. Okay. Same for the front. A little grease on there. And I'm going to go ahead, while the going's good, and install the star wheel adjuster on the brake shoes while they're on the bench. I'm going to get my adjuster spring. Put that back in. And it only does go on one way. If you put it on the wrong way, it will come in contact with the star wheel adjuster and prevent it from adjusting the rear shoes up. Okay, now I have it partially assembled on the workbench, and now it's time to bring it over to our backing plate. Go ahead and sort of hang those right up there, like that. Okay. <coughs> And all these springs, where do we begin? Well, what I like to do is I like to start with my hold down springs. I know everybody's a little bit different. Okay, there's, there's more than one way to do a brake job, that's for sure. And I'll take those nails and I'll put them right through, right back through that brake shoe. Go ahead and get my hold down spring, put it on there, and give it that. Uh, quarter turn after I push it down and lock it back into place. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same with the front pull down spring. Put the nail through the backing plate into the shoe. Make sure the shoe is sitting nice and straight on the backing plate. And on that front hold down spring, if you remember, we've got to use that little washer Again, this is for our self-adjuster. We don't want to leave that out. And we want to put that right into that little hole or recess on that front brake shoe. We'll get it to stay there. And sometimes when you're juggling multiple parts, things do tend to fall. Springs can go flying. Just a little time and practice, I think, is going to make you, you know, get a little bit better at this. Put that front spring back on. That's just that. Push it down and quarter turn. Okay, so far so good. Okay, we've got our front shoe on, our rear shoes on, our hold down springs are on there. Okay, now what I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to put my parking brake lever back in, or, or strut is what it's called. Go ahead and just insert this right down between that axle and the brake shoes and I want to gently slide my shoes back just a little bit just give yourself enough room to where you can fit that spreader bar back in there okay. like that okay and now the next thing I'm going to want to do is put my anchor pin washer back on top followed by our uh, self-adjuster rod, which is going to connect that, that lever all the way up to our anchor pin on top. I just want to hook it around the lever, and it should go fairly easy right over top of that anchor pin. 
Now here comes the real tricky part whenever doing drum breaks that I found, is putting the return springs back on. This is going to take some practice, okay? You're going to lock the return spring into the brake shoe, sort of a put it in and quarter turn, and when you're installing the return spring bank over the uh, anchor pin, you have to slide it up there, okay, using some leverage. When that happens, sometimes these springs do go flying, so again, practice here uh, is going to just get you better at it over time. I'll slide that one up there, okay, I'm going to move right over here, hopefully this will give you a little bit better shot of me putting those return springs back in. Lock it into the brake shoe. Okay, and there we go. So now we have our hold down springs, return springs back in, but we have one more spring to put back in there, and that's for that self adjuster. So, the same way we got it out, I just want to lift up on that lever. I'm going to push it up between the brake shoe. The more I lift up on that lever, okay, the easier it's going to go. And you heard that click, it locked into place, and so we're good to go. Okay. Now, next tool that we're going to take a peek at is going to be that adjustment caliper you saw earlier. And this is what the tool looks like. It's got a little lock nut on there. Okay. And what this will do for the technician is if you loosen the lock nut, we can place it over the brake shoes, okay, right in the middle of the brake shoe. Go ahead and tighten that lock nut down, just snug it down. And now we'll take these pointy parts right here, okay, in here, and we can set those right in the brake drum, and this is going to tell us, okay, you can probably hear how it's wiggling around, it's going to tell us how much we need to adjust our brake shoes before they contact the drum. So you're not really going to be able to see it from your angle, but that little star wheel that we took out earlier, that's what I'm working on underneath here. I'm using that brake spoon, and I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm, I'm turning that star wheel okay, until the brake shoes come in contact okay, with that set. Once I get that on there, I can go ahead and put my drum on. And if it's properly adjusted, you should see a little drag on there. That means that the shoes are just contacting the drum. We don't want to over-tighten the brake shoes. They wedge in against the drum, and that's going to cause you some noise back there, and they might even lock up the rear wheels. But that's it for um, disassembly and reassembly of the General Motors 9-inch rear drum. Um, I hope this helps you out.